Hi everyone, this is a design team project for Tracy Fox Creative. All relevant links will be below, including links to Tracy's shop, Tracy's social media, the digitals that I've used for this project, and the other creative design team members. I hope you enjoyed this video. I thought I would come on today and show you some of the embellishments that I'm making for my project this month. So firstly, we'll start off with the CD envelopes. Now, I avocado dyed a whole heap of stuff for this project and just because it was the first time I had done it, so I did a whole heap of stuff. It turned out quite nicely, so I want to use a couple of these. So I just need to refold the little flip bit here, which I will do. And then I want to do some gold around the edge a bit. So for that, I am going to use my Inca Gold. Now, you can use a gold pen, gold paint, um, gel pen, whatever you've got, really. Um, gilding wax. No, I've never used that sort of stuff, but... Yeah, I've used gold pen and that before, but I love Inca Gold. It's very subtle and I just enjoy using it. So, And I've got it, so it's good to use it. <laughs> so I'm just going to go around the edges with that. And I'm going to use a paintbrush. It's quite a firm paintbrush. I think I've used it for some glue previously. <laughs> um, yeah. So I used to do this with my finger, which is fun, but it is a little messy. So I'm finding for this it's a bit easier with the paintbrush. Now it is quite cool here and it is hard to get enough of the Inca Gold onto my paintbrush. So what I'm doing is just spraying it with a tad of water to help it move a bit. And that just helps me get it on my paintbrush. So I just get the tiniest bit on there and then just go around the edge like that. And then if you want, you can take it in a little bit just to get a few glittery bits. I don't know how well you can see, but if I tip it back and forth, you can probably see the little subtle highlights that I'm getting. So I'm going to continue to do that all around the four edges. Now, when I've finished doing that, I just like to get any excess water out of my paint. I don't know if it's necessary, but just to ensure the longevity of the paint quality. So I'll let that dry for a little bit while I wash out my brush and then we'll get on with the next step. So the next thing I'd like to do is a bit of stamping. So I've chosen this stamp here. Last time I used this corner one here, I thought I should change it up and use this one this time. So I've got my aged mahogany distress ink here. It's a little bit darker and I think it will look nice. So I'm just going to do a test stamp first to make sure that it's stamping okay. That's not too bad. It's going to give us that distressed look, which I don't mind. A bit patchy, but that's good. So I think that will look all right. It's just getting the placement. So we'll put it about like that. Nice. And I'll do it around on all the four corners. So 
So very easy embellishment of a CD envelope. I just think with the avocado dyeing, it is so pretty. You really don't need to do much. We may do some further embellishing of it afterwards, but I think the next thing we'll do is get on with our little insert for that. So I have this piece of card, which I have cut. This is tea dyed cardstock. So it's a little bit firmer than paper to do a nice little journaling card. And it fits in there quite nicely. Now, what is the measurement of that? It is four and a half by four and a half inches. Next, I have this text stamp, which is that writing? Not quite sure what it says. Something about analytical table of contents. Hmm. Anyway, so I just want to do a little bit of stamping with this. And for this one, I think I'll use my Victorian velvet, which is a little bit lighter. only got a little ink pad of this so but it doesn't matter if it's a bit patchy because it's background stamping anyway so I just wanted to get it there and then we'll do a little bit more Now, I do have some ribbon as well, which I'd like to use just to bling it up a bit. But first, I will do some corner rounding, I think. So I'll use my 10 millimeter corner rounder. Just makes it look a bit more like a journal card. Neatens things up a little bit. So I've got my vintage photo ink here. So I will go around in that. And then I have fussy cut some of the flowers from Tracy's large fussy cut flowers kit absolutely gorgeous and they fit perfectly in the window so what I need to do is ink those up a little bit just to help with the white spots because I didn't want to have to bother with fussy cutting in between and a ribbon. So I've got this ribbon. Decided to drag out my ribbons because I don't use them enough and I have way too many of them. So I'm going to put some of that down the bottom because it's got the gold highlights and yeah, just a bit of fun to use it. So I'll chop some of that off. And get my fabric glue and we'll attach that first. Let the ribbon overhang the corner and then we will neaten it up afterwards. Now I don't want too much of the glue. So she says we'll put a whole pile on. Takes a while to dry this glue too. So then we can go around and trim that off. And 
And then we can stick our flower down. That's a little journaling card. And then on the back, I like to use a bit of my doily. This one was quite wrinkly after I dyed it, so I've been ripping up bits to use. So I'll just chop some of this out. And put some on the corners. This does show through this glue, so I have to be light with it. You still want to get all the bits. So I'll try that. It should dry all right, though. And see the glue seeping through. Make sure it's adhered. Turn it around, do the same on the opposite corner. So I'll just let that dry a bit and then we'll trim it off. And we will get our little stamp again and just do the other blank corners with our little stamp. Trim the edges of our doily. Okay, now just got to check any of these little bits near the edge. That Sticking. And if you wanted to, you could go over this a bit with your ink just to bring out some of the. It's an embossed oily, so you can bring out some of the embossing. Oh wow, <laughs> the glue's a bit wet. Look how that's reacting. That's all right though. Adds a bit of colour. <laughs> Maybe wait till your glue is dry, but I did want a bit of extra colour, so that's all right. So that is our little journaling card. Now, we'll leave that to dry a little bit while we... Now, I'm thinking of putting it in. We'll see how it goes. Let's just see how it looks. I'm thinking of doing this one this way. So that'll slip in there like that, which is quite nice. Yeah, I think that'll work. You could, of course, put it that way. It's nice to do a couple of different ones. So then you can add extra embellishments if you want. Now, I'm not going to embellish the back or this part, which you could if you're going to put it over the top of a page. And this shows on the other side of a page, you can embellish this, but I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to attach it in my journal yet. So I'm going to leave that until I do know. So the next thing you can do is add some more embellishment to the front. So I might just do a little bit of that. I've got threads here. 
keep all my threads and they get tangled up on everything. So I've got these little flowers that I dyed. I'll cut one of those out. So that is my CD envelope embellishment. So I put that one to the side and we'll get on with the next one we want to do. And next I want to work on a couple of tags. So these are from the Compendium Ads NK6 kit that I'm using. I'm using the pages as pages in my journals and I want to do a couple of the tags as embellishments. They're absolutely gorgeous. So I printed these out on photo matte paper and I have backed them onto some old blank book page just to make them a bit more sturdy and add a nice more vintage style backing. Uh, next I think I will ink around those so again I'll use my aged mahogany here. So I'll just ink front and back of these. Actually, I'm just thinking, I probably want to, which I should have thought of before. I might let that one dry for a bit. What I might like to do is some vintage photo first and then some aged mahogany afterwards. So I'll do the vintage photo and I'll take it in a bit. And then with the aged mahogany, I think I'll go a bit easier with that. And just do the edge. Like that. I won't bother doing the other side. I've got the right blender for the right colour. So they're the two tags. Now to decorate those, I have a couple of pictures here which I've also backed onto some blank book page. Um, I apologise for the glare. They are out of a... I've been using lots of pictures from a Victorian day book. So it's got these beautiful pictures in it. So what I might do is grab my ruler and just rip around the paper to leave a little bit of a paper border. And then I want to ink around this border with my 
What's it called? Seedless? No, aged mahogany. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And then I think we're going to put this one on this tag and this one on this tag. Like so. Now I've just got to debate whether I want to put any cloth underneath them. I've got some nice colours of this, so this might be the go actually. Let's see how long that is. will work. Alright, so we might do that. So I think I want it that way so I get more of the tan over that side. So I'll stick that on. Don't know if you can see either side of me, but I've pulled out half the laces that I own, I think. So what colour do I want to use for these journals? And yeah. <laughs> that looks quite nice, so I think that will do. I do have darker tones of the cheesecloth as well, which might work. Yeah, I might just keep to the cheese cloth. It sits nice and flat, which is really good. So I'm just going to cut a bit of this out and sit that onto there. Might stick it on and then cut it out, which is easier. So I have backed both of my pictures with the cheese cloth. And they're going to look beautiful. So the next thing I want to do is, and I'm not an expert at this at all, is um, add a bit of this gold leaf stuff. So um, I think this one I have here is from Kmart. I did get a pack that had a whole heap from Kmart. So I'll try and use that. And I applied some last time with my silicon app. Blah, blah, blah brush thing applicator thingamajiggy here and that works quite well um, although it spreads it out real nice and flattens it down great and it doesn't stick much it's easy to do without getting your fingers too messy so that was good um, but I thought I might try with um, my paintbrush this is quite a rough paintbrush I'll try with that just for a bit just want to see if I can get it a little more unevenly applied with my paint brush and I've just got my glue stick so we will see how we go and I just want it around not exactly on the edges if I wanted just on the edges I'd probably just use my anchor gold but you know around where we can see it where the pitch is not going to be so I will start with this and I know that we can put some up the top, down the bottom, and along this side. I don't want to cover up this word too much, though, because we do see a bit of that. So I'm just going to grab a little bit out before it blows everywhere. This stuff's almost as bad as glitter in my eyes, and I do not like glitter. <laughs> so I'm still trying to get used to how much to, uh, glue to apply and all of that sort of thing, so... We'll put a little bit down here anyway. Just smidge some glue down. Tear some of this off. Put it down. And then I'll use my brush and we'll see how we go. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think the brush might be better. I'm not sort of uneven. Though it's probably not much different. But I'll show you with the applicator too. Let's just put some there. But this works well to just smear it along. Well, that worked good. I might just stick to that, it's easier. stick down our focal point. Now that I've got gold everywhere. Put that one to the side while we fix up the other one. Grab a bit more of this stuff. So that piece will do. Definitely don't want to sneeze into that, into this thing or we'll drop it, that's for sure. Okay, it should look really pretty on this background. Beautiful. I think it looks all right. Hard to tell. <laughs> sort of went to town with it, didn't I? Okay, so now we can stick this one on. some gold on that picture by the looks. That doesn't matter. Okay, so now we need to, I think we will worry about the back. There's just a little something I want to add to the back. So I have this page out of a reproduction Sears and Roebuck catalogue which I've just decided not to hoard and use some of it. Um, look, it's got parasols there. Might keep that one for, oh, there's one there as well. Might try not to cut into those. Silk braid trimming. I go up this side. Black bright bead trim. Didn't cut that very straight. Black jet bead trimming. I might cut it there. So they're just little adverts for different bead trims. I'll put one down there and one down there, just to add a bit of interest to the back of the tags. Okay. 
I'm not even going to worry about anking those. on there too. Okay, so I'm just going to cut one of this, these bits of this lace out. That'll look quite nice up there. it down like that instead. That or that. I actually kind of like it better like that. But I'll cut these little dangly bits off that look like spider's legs. And I think we better just stick some of our cheesecloth down or it just starts coming undone. do like that so I think I'll put that one down oh, well that's so off centre hang on try that again okay that's a bit better now because I pulled it back up I think I've ripped just a little bit. Oh, have I? I think I've ripped just a little bit there of the um, digital print off, but I can hide that with some gold leaf. Get the glue where I need it, it'll be a good help. And then we'll put a bit of gold leaf. of like this. It's quite bright but it is more magenta. Could stick it to the side. A bit like that. I might do that for this one, something a bit different. So after much ado, I have deliberated and settled on this little cluster of stuff to put down in this bottom corner. It's 
Bitte. Now I think I'm going to sew around this one with some cream thread. And I think that will be done. Okay, so I did a bit of sewing. I just did straight stitch the whole way around this one and that'll help hold the topper on and the cheesecloth in place down this side. With this one, I just did some zigzag down here and here. As I'd already stuck this on or else, I probably would have done straight stitch the whole way around, but I sort of forgot. Not that it matters because I have stuck the back on pretty well. Now, I did decide to put some of this trim down the bottom here, but uh, the colour wasn't really what I wanted, but I liked it a lot. So I got my Victorian velvet and went over it, but it was a bit too pink. So I got my aged mahogany, but that was a bit too mahogany, <laughs> maroon-like. So then I put vintage photo over the top and now I love it. I think it goes with the topper quite nicely. So I'm going to stick that down there. I'm just going to tidy up the edges a bit so it fits. Right. Yeah, that to be I'll just straighten that a little bit there. I think that'll do for this video. I'll end up way too long. I was going to do a pocket for one of these tags, but I don't think I will. I think I'll just show you the one that I did for the tag that I made while I was figuring out what I was going to do here. And so we'll do a quick recap on what we've done today. So I've finished this tag, which is beautiful, which is still crooked. Can't have that. No, it doesn't matter, Nat. <laughs> There's that tag. And now we've got this tag. They're beautiful, actually. I'm quite happy with those. Great way to use up those pictures. Great writing spots. I love the size of the big tags in the kit. So, and then last night I made this pocket to fit one in. So this is a... Uh, pianola paper roll, the start of one. Um, usually I use the really nice starts and I make big envelopes to put in my journals. Um, but I have cut off the starts of a whole lot of rolls and they're more boring starts, but I still want to use them. So I thought I'd grab one out for this and I got the inspiration for this off of um, Carolyn at Lacey Creations, which I'll link down below. I know she did a little pocket like this and stuck it in her journal. I'm not sure if she folded it over, like the inside over that way, made a fancy one or not, but I just did it sort of like an envelope anyway. So it was a great way to use it up. So that's the back. I'll probably end up sticking it in. I might make a pocket behind, I'm not sure but I just sewed around it and embellished it with some of my avocado dyed doily piece. Put a bit of ribbon in there. I added a bit of journaling space there and that just reinforced this top piece as well. And um, I added a bit of lace, that's avocado dyed lace as well. And then I used the tag that I made and slipped it in there. It fits in there nicely. So that's the tag that I practiced on last night. That's a matte picture, so that fits on there really nicely. But I was going through my pictures and I had off cuts of bigger pictures that I wanted to use up and that's why I've got the glossy ones tonight to work with. But that's the one I did last night. So I have three tags now for my journal. So that just slips in there and it closes up. So I might make another pocket with my pianola paper for one of these, I'm not sure. It's good to have a few different things in the journal and not all the same. But at least I've got a few more tags made now. 
And then we made a CD pocket, which I love. So that can go over a page to the side, or I can turn the picture around and put it on that way. And then that just slips out and we've got our journaling space there. With the beautiful flowers from the Fussy Cut Flower Kit. Love those very old world flowers and they're going with the tags and that very nicely. They go with this um, compendium kit really well. And this is one of those that I practiced on last night. So it's got the different stamp on the corners. And a different flower in there. There's the back of that one. So that was a fun mank. I hope that gave you some ideas. And hopefully I shall be on later on in the month. Um, I'll do another project. I've still got the tea cards that I want to have a play with. So I might come on and do something with them with you. And then I'll have a flip through. I'm working on a journal, so I will have a flip through. Hopefully at the end of the month all going well. So take care of yourselves. Be good. And I will see you again soon. Bye.